Hi, my name is Mara Irby. I'm an environmental scientist with the State Water Resources Control Board's Division of Water Rights. I'm going to show you how to submit information through the Delta Watershed Compliance Certification Form. All water right holders and claimants in the Delta Watershed or their agents of record are required to complete and submit this form for each of their water rights or claims by September 3rd, 2021. The purpose of the Compliance Certification Form is to ensure compliance with the Board's August 20th, 2021 initial orders imposing water right curtailment and reporting requirements in the Sacramento-San Joaquin Delta watershed, which were authorized by emergency regulations that became effective August 19th, 2021. By completing the Compliance Certification Form, right holders and claimants, or their agents of record, certify under penalty of perjury that they will comply with the provisions outlined in the initial orders. This includes monitoring the curtailment status of their water right or claim by subscribing to the Delta Drought email subscription list or frequently checking the Delta Watershed Curtailment Status list maintained on the Delta Drought webpage. The Delta Watershed Compliance Certification Form must be completed for all water rights and claims in the Delta watershed, irrespective of current curtailment status or season of diversion for the water right or claim. This form is submitted via the State Water Board's Water Rights Form and Survey Submittal Portal at https colon double forward slash public.waterboards.ca.gov. The HTTPS is required there, otherwise you won't reach the page. To get started, click Log in here at the bottom of the page. Here you are asked for your login and password. You can find this information on the third page of the initial order imposing water right curtailment and reporting requirements, which was physically mailed to you on August 20th. Keep in mind that every water right or claim has separate login credentials, and you must submit an individual compliance certification form for each of your rights or claims using their respective login credentials. If you need assistance obtaining your login information, you can contact Division of Water Rights staff at bay delta at waterboards.ca.gov or 916-319-0960. This tutorial is being recorded within our test environment using a revoked water right for the purpose of providing an example. What you see within the live survey portal may be slightly different as it is kept up to date. Click login to continue once you've entered that information. If this is your first time logging into the survey portal under this water right or claim, you will be asked to provide an email address that can be associated with this water right or claim. After entering your email address, click continue. After doing so, you'll be taken to the water user dashboard, which will contain a list of all of the forms available for this water right or claim. You will see either three or four forms related to the specific right or claim, depending on the diversion amount associated with this right or claim. In this video, we are completing the Delta Watershed Compliance Certification Form. The Compliance Certification Form is the only form that must be completed for each water right in the Delta Watershed. The other two certification forms are optional forms that may be used to request certain exceptions from curtailment based on human health and safety needs or non-consumptive uses of water. Please see the other tutorials for instructions on completing other forms in the survey portal. To enter the compliance certification form, click the survey link next to the title for the form. This page explains the purpose for this form. In addition to items already mentioned in this tutorial, this page describes that water right holders or their agents of record who receive an order 
are responsible for immediately providing notice of the order to all diverters exercising their water right or claim covered by the order. This means, for example, if you lease your property to someone who is exercising your water right, you must immediately make them aware of this order and its requirements. Please review the information on this page carefully and click Next to proceed with the form. This page explains the curtailment notification process I mentioned a moment ago. Certain water rights in the Delta watershed are currently curtailed by order from the board. As water supply and demand conditions change, additional rights or claims may be curtailed or curtailments may be suspended temporarily or permanently. In order to remain informed about whether your water right or claim is curtailed so that you may remain in compliance and avoid potential liability, you must either check the State Water Board's website frequently or subscribe to the Delta Drought email list at the webpage linked here. On this webpage, the State Water Resources Control Board email list, scroll down to the drop down menus and then select Water Rights. A list of checkboxes will appear. Select the one next to Delta Drought. Then return to the top of the page and enter your email address and your full name in the boxes provided, then click subscribe. Shortly afterward, you will receive an email containing a link to confirm that you would like to subscribe. You must click the link provided in the email or send a message to the email address listed in the message in order to complete your subscription. If you do not take one of these actions to complete your subscription, you will not be successfully added to the list. Returning to the form, if you choose not to subscribe to the email list, you must remain apprised of the curtailment status of your water right by frequently checking the curtailment status of your water right or claim on the Delta Drought webpage. The tutorial titled Curtailment Status List Tutorial describes how to check the status of your water right on this page. Even if you are subscribed to the email list, you may find it helpful to consult the curtailment status list. It contains a color-coded searchable table listing the status of each right. With regard to how frequently you should check the website, if you do not subscribe to the email, you should do so at least weekly and more often when precipitation patterns change. Click Next to move to the first data entry form. Each statement on this acknowledgement and certification page that has an asterisk is a required field. Clicking the first radio button next to the first required field certifies that you will remain informed about the curtailment status of your water right or claim by either of the means I just mentioned, by subscribing to the email list or frequently, at least weekly, checking the online curtailment status list. Subscribing to the email list or more frequent checking of the curtailment status list may be beneficial in order to be timely informed of any suspension or lifting of curtailment. By clicking this button, you also acknowledge that failure to comply with the order is not excused by failure to subscribe to the Delta Drought email list or check the online curtailment status list on the Delta Drought webpage. Clicking the second radio button certifies that you have provided notice of the order to all parties diverting water under this right or claim, as described previously. Clicking the third radio button certifies that you will immediately cease diversion under this right or claim in the event it is curtailed, unless you qualify for one of the exceptions listed below. In order to receive one of these exceptions, you must complete the applicable exception certification form available on the same water user dashboard within the survey portal where we began this form. If you qualify for one of the exceptions listed below, non-consumptive use, human health and safety needs, or an alternative water sharing agreement, <clears throat> click the appropriate box. Generally, a non-consumptive use exception would allow a diverter who diverts water for non-consumptive use, such as for hydropower generation, and then returns the water to the source stream, where it is available for downstream diversions, 
to continue to divert to this use in the event they are curtailed. A human health and safety needs exception would allow a diverter to continue to divert for minimum human health and safety needs that cannot be otherwise met in the event that their right or claim is curtailed. An alternative water sharing agreement is an agreement between water right holders or claimants that achieves the same purposes as the curtailment process. You can find more information about these exceptions to curtailment in the reference guides or in the sections of the emergency regulation that are cited on this page. The reference guides and the emergency regulation are linked on the Delta Drought webpage that contains the curtailment status list. Curtail, click next to go to the second data entry form. This page requires you to indicate if you have an alternative source of water that you can use to serve the place of use associated with this water right or claim. For example, you may have a reservoir in which you stored water last winter that you are able to draw from in place of this right if it is curtailed. If this is the case, you would select the first option, previously stored water. Other options are groundwater, contracted surface water, such as if you have a water delivery contract with another right holder or claimant, hauled water, other, and none. You should select all options that are alternative sources of water to this right or claim. If you select other, please provide additional information regarding this source or sources in the text box below. When you are finished, click next. This is the last page of the form. On this page, you must sign the form by entering your name in the field provided and note your relationship to the legal right holder or claimant. If you select other, explain your relationship to the legal right holder or claimant in the box below the dropdown. You are also required to submit phone and email contact information. Lastly, you must check the box to certify under penalty of perjury that all information entered into this form is true and correct to the best of your knowledge. After doing so, click Finish and Submit at the bottom of the page to, to save and submit your compliance certification form. After clicking Submit, you will be taken to the summary of the form you have just completed. To save or print for your records, select Show as PDF at the bottom of the page, and then select the desired action here. If you return to the survey portal's water user dashboard using the link at the bottom of the summary page, you can return to the summary page for any completed form by clicking Summary next to the appropriate form. To modify a form you have completed, Click Survey, again to re-enter the form. You should only make changes to the form in the survey portal if the deadline has not yet passed. If you would like to make a correction to your form after the September 3rd deadline for the compliance certification form, please email staff at bay-delta at waterboards.ca.gov with the correction. You may also call the Delta Drought phone line at 916 319-0960 for assistance. Thank you for watching the Delta Watershed Compliance Certification Form tutorial. For more information, please visit the State Water Board's Delta Drought website. If you have questions or need assistance, you may contact us that same information, bay-delta at waterboards.ca.gov or 916-319-0960.